Kramer Art Shop. This is Anne Marie, at 344 West 78th Street. Yes, well, I had a package today delivered from your store. And, well, there, there must be some mistake somewhere. Uh, well, uh, it's, it's an art object, but, but that's just a, a layman's opinion. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's gold, and, and it's twisted and, and, and lumpy. <laughs> sort of like brass mashed potatoes. <laughs> no, of course I didn't. I've never seen it before. I've never even been in your store. To whom am I speaking? It, well, Mr. Kramer, will you please stop insisting that this is mine? If you'll just check your... Oh, just a minute, please. Someone's at the door. Thank you. Oh, hi, hi. Donald. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody's on the phone. Hello, Mr. Kramer. Uh, look, Mr. Kramer, I I I'm sure if you'll look into your files, you'll discover your mistake. <coughs> No, I did not order an art object. And if I did, it certainly wouldn't be that ridiculous piece of junk. <laughs> no, there is no card I looked. Mr. Kramer, there is no card I've already looked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, Mr. Kramer. <laughs> the funniest thing just happened. <laughs> You'll never guess. That's it. <laughs> yes, it was my mistake all along. Well, well, thank you very much for your trouble. <laughs> Bye. You? Why? <laughs> Passing by the art store, and it caught my eye, and it just seemed to scream out at me. Look at me. I'm that girl. <laughs> Um, it, it, it's such a surprise. I had no idea. I hoped you'd like it. It's it's really very well. It, it's it's very hard to put into words. Well, you were doing just fine a minute ago. Oh, a minute ago I made a snap judgment, but but now that I'm taking the time, you know it screams. It really does. If it didn't scream a minute ago, it can't scream now. Oh, Donald, it was screaming all the time. I just wasn't listening. Oh, honey, be honest. You don't have to spare my feelings. My feelings have nothing to do with this. I mean, now that I'm taking the time and and really looking at it and and, and listening, I can understand why it would make you think of me. Why? Well, for, for one thing, it, it, it's it got fat hips. It has no fat. It has no hips. It, it has a feeling. That's all you get from it. 
Well, for a minute there, I got a feeling of fat hips. It, it has strength and a, and a feeling of firmness, determination. And charm and, and imagination and, and warmth and, and understanding and, and pride and compassion for the underprivileged. I think you've gone too far. I have not. It's precious. It's come a long way from a ridiculous piece of junk. Donald, what a terrible thing to say. I didn't say that. You did. Well, that was before I knew you bought it for me. Don't you see, Donald? This represents how you feel about me. My, my good points and my bad points. What bad points? Well, you said firmness and determination. Well, what's bad about that? Well, they're not very feminine. <laughs> All I meant was it has form. The angles here being in direct contrast to the simple linear fusion with the massively powerful base. Well, that's not very flattering. Anne, it isn't the look. Remember, it's the feeling. Well, it's beginning to feel stupid and untalented. That's it. It's going back. No, no, it isn't. I, I forbid it. It's staying. Why? Why would you want to have anything around here that makes you feel untalented and stupid? Because it's a gift from you. What, honey, that's just plain stupid. See, anyway, you've taught me a powerful lesson, Donald, and I want to keep it around so that it'll remind me of my faults. And you're missing the whole point of the gift. It's not a punishment. Hi. 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 We heard loud talking. Thought you were having a party. Oh, no. Uh, we were just discussing something. Oh, well, maybe we can help. I know lots of times Ruthie and I have uh, loud discussions, which could really benefit from having kind of a neutral observer. With a little bit more objective point of view, you know. <laughs> Well, thanks, but in this case, it's not worth the trouble. Trouble, for Pete's sake. What are friends for? Uh, Jerry, please don't do that. Huh? Do what? Uh, your pipe. D don't clean it against my object. Object? Jerry, <clears throat> this is an art object. I thought it was a spittoon. Jerry, for heaven's sake, how can you talk like that? Well, Ruth, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, they've heard the word spittoon before. <laughs> so grow up, will you please? I'm awfully sorry, Anne. Oh, Ruthie, don't be silly. Jerry didn't mean it. Well, that's just the point. I'm married to a man who can't tell a work of art from a spittoon. <laughs> uh, here, here it comes, the culture appreciation hour. Don't be crass. Crass? Me? Gentleman Jerry Bowman. Look, um, let's just forget it. Anybody can tell that's a cow. Uh, Donald bought it, you know, because it reminded him of me. A very beautiful cow. You hear that? Life is one big nursery rhyme. What do you mean by that? Isn't it obvious? Hey, diddle, diddle, cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. A child. I'm a child. <laughs> That's Mr. Finesse talking. I think what you two need about now is a neutral observer. Yeah, with an objective point of view. Uh, just a minute, there. Hold it. Just what is that supposed to mean, Mr. Finesse? Did you ever go to a party where you didn't spill a drink? Yes. Is that a direct enough answer for you, child? This is getting out of hand. I think so. Hey, listen, why don't we all have ourselves a drink? He'll only spill it. Where are you going? I am going where taste and refinement are not dirty words. I'm going to my mother's. You're not going anywhere without permission. Oh, did I forget to say may I? May I? Seven giant steps should do. All right, <laughs> oh, talk to her. You stay with Donald. What's, what's the matter with her? What did I say? Well, old pal, I think we'd better get some air. Now, the problem is, you both overreacted. Well... Jerry, there's a wise old saying about getting more flies with honey. Oh, hello, Mr. Brentano. Hello. Miss Marie, she's home? Uh, well, no, no. She's in with Mrs. Bauman. Oh, I was supposed to fix the radiator. Well, uh, sir, you just go in and make yourself at home. We'll be right back. Jerry. Oh, buddy, let me tell you a little something about women. And that's a very important little something about women. Jerry, I want you to go in there, and I want you to tell Ruth. 
Anne, how is she? Is she still, um... She's still, but she's mellowing. Yeah? She stopped packing. Well, she's getting some sense. But she hasn't started unpacking. <laughs> so from here on in, you're on your own. Honey. What did he call you? <laughs> it's not important. Is Ruth okay? Yeah, she'll be fine. You want to hear a good joke? I could use one about now. It's more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> well, that's true. At least most of the time. You know, all the time I kept thinking to myself, should I buy it or should I not? What made you decide? Just the thought of exposing you to some of the finer things of life. You mean I have no culture? What? You trying to tell me that that... Where is it? Where's what? It was right here on the counter. Now it's gone. I mean, what, what could it possibly be? Okay, well, take it easy oh, now. It's got to be here somebody somewhere. Somebody must have taken it. Who would have done such a thing? Probably somebody leading a dull life. <laughs> Donald, it's nowhere in there. I'll get that. Oh, I feel just terrible. If it's lost, I'll die. If what's lost? Well, it could have just walked off. Maybe it's on the... Excuse me, Daddy. Maybe it's on the couch here. We were nowhere near the couch. Thank heaven for small favors. In the bedroom. Uh, you look. I'll wait here. Every time I come in here, there's some kind of a crisis going on. Did it ever occur to you two that you might not be right for each other? I'll get it. How's the heat? Cold. <laughs> Who was that? That's Mr. Brentano, my landlord. Oh, Donald, this is terrible. Where could it be? Uh, have you looked on the shelves? Maybe if you described it to me. It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, well, well, it's gold, and it's on a black base, and it, and it has a... That's it! Oh, Mr. Brentano, thank you. Where did you find it? In the bedroom. I used it to prop the window open. <laughs> To prop the window open? You use this, this work of art to prop open the window? Is this what you were looking for? What did you think it was? Something broken. Mr. Brentano, this is obviously a very significant and, and, and a very expensive piece of artwork. Who broke it? Nobody broke it. It isn't broken. You, you've made a mistake. You see, oh, it doesn't really matter. Now we found it. I don't make a mistake. I am Italian. Leonardo da Vinci is Italian, Botticelli is Italian, Raffaello is Italian. And I've seen plenty of art objects. But this, this is something broken. Yes, well, obviously you just don't know much about this kind of art. Do you need anything else? Uh, no, thank you. How do you like that? Well, I'll take that, Daddy. Where did you get this dirty thing? Daddy! It's a nightmare. That's what it is. What's <laughs> dirty about it? I refuse to discuss it. Well, you're just not used to seeing abstract art, that's all. Abstract? Modern. I know what abstract means. We have those words in Brewster. We're not all country bumpkins. All I meant was you don't see things like this in Brewster. You bet your sweet patootie you don't. Brewster's a decent community. Daddy, I don't see anything dirty about it. Of course not. Stuff like this doesn't shock you anymore. Not the big city girl. Remember those things you thought were exciting in Brewster? Guess they seem pretty dull to you now. Daddy, that is not true. Well, I, I won't keep you any longer. I just dropped by in case my little girl might be lonely. Oh, Daddy, that's very sweet, and I appreciate it. Isn't that sweet, Donald? That uh, certainly is. And if you don't mind a completely objective opinion, I think you should take that piece of pornography and toss it in the garbage can. <laughs> If I had showed up here today empty-handed, would you have thought less of me? Never. If I had arrived with only a smile on my lips and a song in my heart, would you have slammed the door in my face? Of course not. Then why did I buy that thing? Oh, Donald, you mustn't be like that. Buying it for me was the sweetest, most wonderful, generous gesture. Letting anybody else see it was the only mistake. <laughs> You banged me, Marie? Oh, yes. I thought maybe if I hit the radiator with a whack, it might whack back with some heat. But no luck. It's still chilly up here. Chilly? As in North Pole. But my husband was here yesterday fixing the pipes. Could you ask him to please come up again? 
I could always ask, but uh, he's not too anxious to come back. Why on earth not? He don't get too much for remarks about his taste. His taste? Oh, that. Oh, oh, Mrs. Brentano, you've got to understand. That was just a little misunderstanding. You see, what happened was he mistook this art object for a piece of junk. So? Well, the person, a very dear person, actually a gentleman of whom I'm deeply fond, who bought me the art object was standing right there. So I had to say something. And, and besides, I, I didn't say very much. I mean, all I said was that perhaps Mr. Brentano's experience with art was somewhat limited. You know, of another time and another place. And you don't know art. Oh, Mrs. Brentano, I'm really sorry I said what I did, but, but, well, I just couldn't hurt this very dear person's feelings. Mr. Brentano has feelings, too. <laughs> Mr. Brentano, I'm so... Ruthie, Jerry left for work this morning without even a goodbye. I couldn't sleep a wink. Oh, for heaven's sakes, don't worry about that. He'll probably call later and say goodbye on the telephone. Annie, a telephone goodbye from your husband means he's leaving you. Oh, now that's silly. No, it isn't. What's silly is how easily I forgot. Forgot what? Jerry has wonderful qualities. Actually, he drinks a lot more than he spills. I'm a very lucky woman. Yeah, well, well, I think you're both lucky. And so he isn't perfect. Who is? Not very many people, fortunately. Who could stand to live with them? So you should be very happy with your Jerry, as imperfect as he is. And maybe I should try to be more imperfect myself. <laughs> Couldn't hurt. It's open. Hi there. For me? <laughs> for you, it's always chocolates. These are for Ruth. What's the occasion? The occasion is that fancy spittoon or cow or whatever it is you bought in. Jerry, for the last time, that is neither a spittoon nor a cow. Well, I don't care if it's a shoehorn. Whatever it is, it's made me do some hard, constructive thinking. Well, I am extremely happy to be responsible for making you do any thinking at all. I mean about Ruth and women. In general, that is hard thinking. I'm telling you, Don, when you start evaluating all the dames in this world, all the smart Alex and grabby types, a little nursery rhyme is like a breath of fresh air. Who can a poem hurt, you know? I don't know. All I know is only God can make a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Brentano, Mrs. Brentano, would you tell Mr. Brentano that the heat's coming up okay now? I mean, it's enough. And when also that the window sash is broken. Uh, thank you. Bye. Oh, hi, Daddy. I can't believe my eyes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to leave it here. It's just that I, I haven't found the right place for it yet. And let's face it, you wouldn't like this piece no matter where I put it. I meant I can't believe my eyes that you're alone. Where's the great giver of gifts? He's found a home of his own? Oh, Daddy. Actually, I came to apologize. Well, you've certainly made a great start. I'm trying to say I'm sorry, and it's not easy. It's also not necessary. Well, it suddenly occurred to me that maybe I am getting narrow in my viewpoint. Narrow? Not you, Daddy. Anything's possible. Just as it's possible that you're growing in yours. Well, thank you, Daddy. You broadened your horizons. You haven't been afraid to seek out new knowledge, new strange experiences. Yeah, well, new strange experiences have a way of finding me. Whichever. You've always been... Isn't it a little warm in here? I know. I've been begging Mr. Brentano for heat. Now it's pouring in. Now, where was I? Something about new strange experiences and, and new horizons. Yes, and you've made the most of your imagination and your intelligence. Did I mention that? Well, just now. That's when it hit me. Well, after all, Daddy, I am your daughter.
My thought exactly. And all that I am and all that I hope to be, I owe to you. And a little bit to Mother. Why not? Give the devil his due. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Anyway, that's all I wanted to tell you. Thank you, Daddy. Bye. Keep up the search for newer and brighter things. In the meantime, maybe you can put that in a dark corner. <laughs> You banged again, Miss Marie? Mr. Brentano, this whole thing is getting a little ridiculous. I hope it isn't not too hot for you, huh? Well, it hasn't triggered the automatic sprinkler system yet. You want more? Mrs. Brentano, will you please tell him that I'm sorry and that he's a wonderful landlord and he has great taste and he certainly knows his art. She's sorry. That's what you say. No, that's what I say. I'm sorry, Mr. Brentano. Oh, you're welcome. I, I'm going to fix the heat. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'll take this in the bedroom. Excuse me. That was nice. What was nice? She apologized. Uh-huh. You know why she apologized? Why? Because she realized that it looked more like something to prop up her window than an art object. What? That. This? Hmm. Oh, this here. I thought this was something broken. <laughs> it's nice to know that I haven't lost my touch. Oh, <laughs> uh, but these are for Anne, Mrs. Brentano. You know I always bring you chocolates. <laughs> Isn't it awfully warm in here? My husband is fixing the heat. Uh, she's all right now. Ooh, beautiful flowers. Look, Rosa, come here. Marigolds, carnation, lily of the valley. Hey, you really know your flowers. Oh, I know what I like. Now, you tell the miss not to touch the radiator anymore, and then I'll be back tomorrow for the window. Eh? Come on, Rosa. Come on. Donald, I didn't hear you. Oh, well, there's been a lot of traffic. <laughs> oh, Donald, they're beautiful. Thank you. Why? Well, for one thing, they're beautiful, natural, colorful, pungent and feminine. And that screams you more than any art object in the world. Oh, Don. Pungent? Oh, honey, let's not start that again. No. I love you. And I think that I'm dating the most, the most wonderful and the, and the most thoughtful person in the entire universe. Universe? That covers a lot of territory. The world isn't nearly big enough anymore. Oh, and I love the sculpture, too, Donald. Mostly because it's it's taught us all something. That, that everybody sees things differently. And in seeing things differently, well, we all learn that nothing is the same. And thanks to whatever it is, I think, I think everybody has learned to tolerate himself and herself a little better. Not to mention each other, or themselves, or ourselves. Uh, well, I, I hope Jerry and Ruth have come to us clear in understanding. Oh, they have. And they're closer than ever now. And all because you had the good sense and the great taste to buy that art object in the first place. You know, no matter what I expect of you, somehow you always surprise me. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Very nice. And wasn't it all worth a hundred times the, the 20 or 30 dollars you spent on it? 20 or 30 dollars? Honey, this thing cost me 97.50. You're kidding. Who kids about 97.50? Donald, you're gonna have to promise me something. Okay, what? If you're ever walking down the street again and anything screams at you, you ought to pay absolutely no attention. Okay. Unless, of course, it's me. 